This is a wonderful book called The Calculus. It was written by a man named Louis Lighthold. It's the first book written in this way, in the sense that it has very, very detailed explanations to the examples in the book. And several other books kind of followed this one. So it's kind of like the calculus book that changed the world of calculus books. Louis Lighthold, by the way, was the inspiration for the real life Jaime Escalante. And you say, who's that? Jaime Escalante was a Bolivian American mathematics teacher from California. He taught in California. And he was portrayed in the 80s movie Stand and Deliver uh, by Edward James Olmos. Great math movie. I'm just going to say watch the movie. Stand and Deliver. Just know that the main character in Stand and Deliver was inspired by Louis Lighthold. And you'll be like, oh, I got to get this book. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to check it out. Um, there's, you can still get it. I'm pretty sure you can still get it on Amazon. It always smells amazing. Old books, new knowledge. That's what I want to talk about in this video. So old books can bring new knowledge. As a collector of many things, okay, I collect math books, Magic the Gathering cards, although those have gotten out of my price range and I sold most of my good cards. Coins, again, those get kind of expensive, so I have very low dollar stuff. Vintage weights. Um, I used to collect comic books. So as a collector, math books are one of the few things that are special in the sense that you can take an old math book, which in my view is a collectible, and you can learn from it. You know, if, if you collect coins, you put the coin in a sleeve, a two by two, and it goes in a little box. Or if it's a graded coin, it's in a slab. There's different slabs and rating agencies. I can talk about this forever, so I'll try not to derail too much to coins. Same thing with Magic the Gathering cards or comic books. You can get them graded or ungraded. Comic books, at least you can read, but then you don't really want to touch them because you're worried about the condition. Math books, sure, they're collectibles, but... You know, nobody really thinks so, except maybe me and maybe a few of you collect math books. It's not really something that's very popular. So they're low dollar collectibles. So you can find old math books like this one or some of the ones behind me here, which I'll show you in a minute, at good prices and collect them and learn mathematics. You can get knowledge from them, right? You can read the math book and get knowledge. That, that's the cool thing about math books. Old books new knowledge. You can do the same thing with like vintage weights, right? You can, old weights, new gains, right? You can lift weights that are really old that people have used to get strong and you can get stronger with those weights. Same thing with the math books, right? You can build your mind and learn new knowledge from old books that you can get really, really cheaply. That's, that's, that's uh, one of the reasons I collect math books. Initially, I started collecting math books because I was very bad at mathematics and I needed to look at more than one book in order to understand things. And then it just became like an obsession, right? It became an obsession. So old books, new knowledge. This is a collectible book in my opinion. It's very hard to find older copies. Uh, again, I'll leave a link to the newer one. Here's one that's free. I've talked about it before. Old books, new knowledge. Vector analysis by H.B. Phillips. I've got a couple by H.B. Phillips here. I also have Analytic Geometry and Calculus by H.B. Phillips. Both of these are free, by the way. And I think I have another one here by Phillips. Uh, no, I don't. I thought I did. I thought I did. Oh, I do. I do. I do. I have uh, the Combined Differential and Integral Calculus by Phillips. So all of these books are free. So who is H.B. Phillips? He was a professor at MIT for many years, and then he became the chair. So for those of you that don't know, the chair of a math department is basically the person who's in charge of all the math teachers. He was like the boss of the math teachers. And he did that his whole life and he was a great teacher. All of these books are free because they're so old. They're in the public domain and most of them have answers. I believe this one has answers to every single problem. You can also get the volumes separately and you can, you can Google the books by H.B. Phillips. He also has a differential equations book, which is also free online, which has answers to every problem. So you can take books like these 
Oh, amazing. And, you know, you can sit down and you can just do one problem, you know, and I feel that that makes a difference in your day. I think the best time to do math, and this is, this is just my view here, this is what I do, is I make sure I do at least one problem every single morning. And it stays with you for the rest of the day. You know, it's, it's just like a collectible that you can use, which, which is very rare. And I know that many people watching this video aren't collectors. In fact, I don't know that many collectors in, in real life. And I've known a few. And I don't want to say collectors are weird because I'm a collector. That makes me weird. Uh, but I, the ones I've known have been a little bit quirky. There's different types of collectors. But as a collector, um, yeah, I, I love math books. So you might not be one. If you are a collector, then obviously you're going to jump on board and start collecting math books. If you're not a collector, you know, should you be one? I think so, especially because you can get them so inexpensively. Now, the books by H.B. Phillips, it's, it's hard to get the originals. There's not many copies because they're out of print. Um, the one by Lighthold you can still get. One that is a little bit more accessible and probably very easy to find, and I'll try to remember to leave links in the description to all of these books, is this one here, College Algebra by Rosenbach, uh, Whitman, and Meserve. Just a regular old college algebra book. This one actually has answers only to the odd numbered problems. Nothing really special about it. It's got some harder exercises and it's got a lot of exercises. Also, some of the explanations in this book are going to be different than the explanations you find in more modern books. So old books, new knowledge, right? You can learn new math from, from old books. Yeah. And if you're, if you're in college, you know, if you're, if you're taking a college class, you know, this will help you. You know, because if you do math from old books, sure, it might not be on your test, but it's going to teach you mathematics. And you never know, right? You'll, you'll encounter some new question. You'll be sitting there in class. And there's nothing better than being in the classroom and seeing mathematics and saying, oh, oh, I know how to do that. I did that before in this book I got from 1955. And here's a better way to do it. It's like, whoa, it's just a really good feeling when you have knowledge that you've learned on your own. For some reason, the mathematics that you learn on your own from old books or math books in general, that self-taught knowledge, for some reason, it always feels better to us. For example, I taught myself conic sections. I never learned about ellipses or hyperbolas uh, or, or parabolas in a certain way in college. I learned about circles and uh, just regular parabolas, like you know, y equals x squared, not the, not the ones um, that open sideways. So I had taught myself all that other stuff, you know, that, that specific knowledge about parabolas and ellipses and hyperbolas on my own. Or field theory. Field theory is another topic that I taught myself. So those things, when I encounter those things, I have more appreciation for them. Or Netherian rings is another example. And I'm sure you all have stories of things that you've taught yourself. And those are the stories that stick with us. And that knowledge we gain from old math books is amazing. Another reason to collect old math books and more on the new knowledge later, is, for example, this book here actually belonged to a man named Tony. And I Google stalked him. And I think he's still alive. I'm not sure. And he was an engineer at Boeing. And this is the book he used when he was in college. So he used this book to learn calculus. Somehow it magically ended up in my hands. And then he went and had a career at uh, Boeing. Let's see if it has the date here uh, for when Tony use this book. Here it is. I'm not going to show it in the video because it has his address. Uh, hmm, not sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't have the date. It says desk number 1996, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's the date. Um, I think that's something else. But yeah, this looks really old though. This looks very, very old. Very old. And then this book itself, this book is from, let's check the date. 1969 and 1972. So this is uh, the 1972 edition, I believe. Right, yeah, by Lewis Lighthold. Wonderful book, wonderful book. Old books, new knowledge. Yeah, it's good stuff. Math books are great. Hopefully you're a collector, and if not, hopefully you start collecting math books. And they're really inexpensive right now, which is really good. If you're wondering where to get old books, Amazon, like if I'll leave links to these. And then what you can do is you can look for used copies. So don't buy the new copy, right? Click the link and then look for used ones. 
Um, used ones are usually cheaper and you can get older editions sometimes, sometimes. It just depends. I think you should be able to find older editions of this one really inexpensively because this is the fourth edition and this is one of those books that was like mass produced and used by like lots of people. What is this? Fabulous finds. Thank you for your order. We strive to make our customers 100% satisfied. Huh. I guess that's where they bought it before. Flips fabulous finds. I don't think that's where I bought it. I have no idea where I bought it. Copyright 1958. Wow, piece of history, piece of history. Until next time, good luck. Keep doing math.